Friends, welcome. We have a super fun video to share today. It's actually a destination highlight on the Palm Springs Valley. But before we dive into that, if you have been following along the first few shows, thank you for coming back. We really appreciate it. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, you're probably wondering what this is all about. So here's the quick uh, who, what, why. I'm Stephen Potaski, founder of the Luxus Group. If you want to know about me and what we what we do and kind of where we've created experience in this space, go back to the first show. It will give you everything you probably want to see. Uh, what is this? Well, this is a, a channel dedicated specifically to helping people make informed decisions about buying and selling vacation property around the world. That is what we do. We love it. It's my true passion. And we just want to make sure you have all the tools at your disposal in a free way that's more education based versus the bias that comes from the industry about what makes sense for you. So that's what it's about. And the why is for me is I just love doing this. I have had clients for the last 15 years that we've worked with on buying and selling vacation property and I get so frustrated when people don't have all the, you know, the great information, their fingertips to make the best decision for their family. People are making huge decisions, whether it's, it's financial and it's lifestyle based. So for me, I just love helping people. My team loves helping people. And we're going to use this channel as a way to share with all of you, all of our experiences that hopefully can apply to you and your vacation travel world for your family. Now let's just dive right in to the destination spotlight today, which is the Coachella Valley. Now, most people refer to the Coachella Valley as the Palm Springs Valley. It is one and the same. Um, but what's interesting, most people do not know, is the Coachella Valley actually is made up of around 10 plus jurisdictions and nine specific cities. I will not cover all of them today. There is too much detail to cover on each one. But when you say Palm Springs, it's a kind of a loaded topic because there are so many individual cities and they all bring something unique and special. We have owned property there for many, many years, 15 years to be specific, in multiple of the cities. And we've watched the evolution of what's going on down there from what we'd say maybe 10, 15 years ago was very quiet, you know, older generation, a little more slow moving to where it is today when you're hearing things about new hockey arenas being built and Coachella and Stagecoach and bringing this, this young next generation crowd into the cities, which has created a whole different vibe of the space. So I would say this particular destination is amazing for all generations, whether you're younger or older, there's something that fits all the buckets. So when we think about the Palm Springs Valley, let's think about the cities as a whole. I'm going to run through very quickly all of them, and then we're going to dive into three of them, four of them specifically, to give you a bit more details. Now, what you can expect on the details is around what you will envision each community to be like. So for us, when we look at a community, it's what is our ultimate goal? Are we looking for um, golf? Are we looking for nightlife? Are we looking for restaurants, culinary scene, um, activity, vibe, whatever it could be? So I'll break it into three sections within the valley as a whole, which will give you some good perspective on what to, to expect within this particular area. Now, I'm going to rattle them off quickly, so get ready. If you kind of work your way from LA east, you're going to have Palm Springs, Cathedral City, a Thousand Palms, uh, Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert, Indian Wells, Bermuda Dunes, La Quinta, Indio, and Coachella. When you drive in the Palm Springs Valley and you cross city to city, you pretty much don't know. Unless you miss a sign, they all look so similar uh, just when you're kind of rolling on the streets. But they actually are all quite different and quite unique and have their own special vibes. So let's dive into a few of what I think are uh, the key highlights and the ones that people are probably most interested in knowing about. First off, we'll dive right into Palm Springs. That is, um, you know, the original city. That's where all of uh, LA starlights and Hollywood and famous people would reside. They would leave the coast and come to the desert and that's where it all began. And over the past decade, so much reinvestment has poured into Palm Springs. What you do not see a lot in Palm Springs is gated communities because gated communities weren't really a thing 50 years ago when Palm Springs was kicking off and they, uh, they were just people building these wonderful, beautiful estate homes against the mountains, but they didn't have these things called, you know, golf country clubs. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we shift to the other side of the valley. But what the revival now is because it has this old amazing feel is there's been this huge investment of capital that's come in from new restaurants, nightlife, um, the, the shopping scene is incredible. They've torn down a lot of old uh, places there and built up this you really, really neat experience. Incredible nightlife. So if you are interested in something like that, 
is a great place to not only to vacation, but also to live. So expect activity and being out and about and doing some cool things. Very walkable now, which you would think in the desert's not really a thing, but they have created some really great places where you can just go walk, farmer's markets, and, and experience what I think is one of the coolest places in the valley. Now, what you might be curious about is how to actually own there and what it might be to rent there. Now, typically, from a rental perspective, you, you could visit a hotel, no problem, you understand what that means. Short-term vacation rental is a whole different program. What had happened is typically short-term uh, vacation rentals are governed by the HOAs, or homeowners associations of each individual community. So a, say it's a golf community and there's 500 homes there. They will have their own rules that ultimately govern short-term vacation rentals, which generally they don't want them. They want people to reside or reside part-time. Now again, go to the beginning of Palm Springs. There are no gated communities or very, very few. So what do you have there? You had this uh, huge number of homes where back about a decade ago, people were vacation renting through the roof. Everyone was, and that was the onset of Airbnb, and we're gonna cover that in a whole different video. So eventually the city was getting complaints. You had this, this huge movement from people that would reside there and they did not like the new vibe. They didn't want people coming and going to their neighbor's house, party for the weekend from LA and then, then go back. I'm generalizing of course, because it's not that bad. Uh, not all vacation renters are disrespectful, it's not the case. Um, but that is the, what people were feeling and so there's this movement to stop it. On the flip side, there was this huge movement of people uh, that were landlords, people that owned these homes, both individuals that were renting them out part-time, and uh, it's sophisticated investors that were buying multiple units and renting them out. So there was this, this great divide, and it ultimately went to ballot. And I, about six, seven, eight years ago, I believe it went to ballot. It was very contested, lobbying on both sides, and ultimately what won was the allowance of STVRs in Palm Springs. A bunch more restrictions and conditions on how, as a landlord, you can do it. There is ways to, uh, you know, complain if your neighbor is doing it inappropriately. Um, there's permits and regulations and a whole system behind it. So I will say, of all the Coachella Valley cities, the best chance of you getting a vacation rental, and you'll hear when I go through it, is going to be in Palm Springs because of the fact it is legal, it's regulated, and it's already been approved via a voice of the citizens through a vote. So when you check it out there and you're renting, you'll know it's being done, generally speaking, on a legal basis, when in many other communities it's done on an illegal basis or in a way that's uh, not consistent with the rules that they should be governed by. Shifting gears through the valley, now we're making our way east, we're going to skip into the Rancho Mirage Palm Desert. So this would be the center of the valley. And if we think of uh, the two ends, the book ends would be La Quinta on one side, and you've got Palm Springs on the other, the west side, and the middle makes up of communities uh, Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert, Indian Wells, Bermuda Dunes. So Rancho Mirage we love, we've owned real estate in that specific community for a long, long time. Um, it's interesting, Rancho Mirage is, I would say, one of the most unique communities because it has a wonderful combination, both of uh, private gated country club communities and also some remarkable non-gated estate communities. When I say a non-gated estate communities, it would be a typical residential street you'd see you know, in most cities, but with some unbelievable homes. So Clancy Lanes, one if you Googled, you would hear that and you'd see some amazing homes. Vista Dunes is an up and coming. And I say these are typically one acre to five acre parcels with these amazing estates that have been created there. So Rancho Mirage has this wonderful mix of that. And because it's in the heart of it all, it's only 20 minutes from the airport. You've got plenty of great public golf courses. There are some private golf courses, as mentioned. You're close to the Palms de Pines Highway, which takes you over into Temecula and San Diego. Really, really great central spot. From an overall perspective on value, I would say it'd be the top three cities in terms of um, expense on the high side, simply because of the, uh, the value of the homes there and the experience and it's just it's just wonderful so as a result homes trade for higher than other cities from an stvr perspective interesting timing and this will you'll hear this is a common theme as regulation is that uh, persists through so many different cities rancho mirage the previous couple mayors had uh, a, a lot of love and, and belief in short-term vacation rentals in a highly regulated state the feeling is, is through a highly regulated state, you can charge what's called the TOT, or transient occupancy tax, to everyone who does nightly rentals. Now when they govern it, they would limit the amount of rentals per pocket, they would limit the, uh, the amount of time you could rent your home in various aspects. But as of October of this year, there's now a moratorium on STVRs. Some people may still do it, they may still do it under the radar, 
They may do it less than 30 days and not rent till the future month. But overall, you can expect to see less and less vacation rentals within uh, that particular city, which is unfortunate, but is the nature of the world we live in as this regulation exists for these types of cities. Shifting now one community over is Palm Desert. Now, Palm Desert and Rancho Mirage butt up against each other, and when you're driving on Monterey, which is a separation street, you actually wouldn't know which is which because they look very similar, very high quality of homes, high quality of living. It's a remarkable city. They would have the uh, famous El Paseo Drive, which is a remarkable shopping center. Uh, it has incredible world-class golf courses, including Bighorn, which is one of the best private clubs in the country. Lots of amazing aspects that Palm Desert. They're very similar to Rancho Mirage because of their adjacency and the fact that they just have really focused on creating this remarkable quality of life there. STVR for them, they actually passed a moratorium many, many years ago. So if you're doing a nightly rental in Palm Desert, it could be part, possibly part of a grandfather deal, but likely it's probably being done under the radar. It may actually not be legal. Um, it's just good to check when you're doing your research. Again, one thing to know about STVRs, which we will cover in another episode, is you can rent your home for less than 30 days. You just can't rent it again within 30 days. And the rules are a little vague on this within the cities, but people do it under the radar all the time. But if I were to rent a vacation home, because I've seen so many people who rent in these, these communities, and then end up getting kicked out because the people lose their permits or they're not doing it correctly, rent in a, in a home that's following the rules. They should have a short-term rental permit number on it. And Palm Desert's a city I would watch for simply because there's been a moratorium on it for so long. Now that said, if you have a friend there or you want to buy there, it is specific for that. There's such limited transient behavior there because of the fact it's never really had this remarkable place to own real estate as well. Uh, it's landlocked between the mountains, the highway, as all of the Coachella Valley is, and very little room for additional development. So great place to own, great place to travel. Now we're gonna move east further to the end of the valley into La Quinta. What's neat about La Quinta is because it's the newest, I wouldn't use the word manufacturer, but it is really a, just a series of incredible world-class golf communities. You go to La Quinta because you love to golf. Don't expect a big nightlife. Don't expect a huge culinary scene. There's, there's great restaurants there as there is everywhere, but you're going there to buy a home or stay in a home that's built within an amazing gated community. Take PGA West, for example. There's six golf courses there. Uh, take uh, Madison Club, one of the top private golf communities in the country, in the world, is located there amazing place to own if you're looking for a slower pace you're not looking for call it the farmers markets and the nightlife and all those aspects you're really looking for a place to park your car hop in your golf cart golf every day hit the spa and relax you know rinse and repeat the next day La Quinta is amazing for that and because it's the newest it would have some probably the newest inventory in the market related to real estate uh, and they have everything in between from desert contemporary to Tuscan desert and all sorts of different styles which you'll find in all the communities but really in particular in La Quinta due to the, the newest of the, uh, of the neighborhoods. Now that makes up what I would suggest are the main cities when you think about Palm Springs looking to go um, because of those particular areas they really form the hub. La Quinta area in Indio as well is where Coachella is, Stagecoach and this you know, amazing music festival. It is bananas if you have not gone. Go if you can, but expect to pay an obscene amount of money for vacation rentals due to everything I've mentioned, the, the limited amount of inventory that's there. And just num and number two, this unbelievable high demand from people coming from around the world. Stay with a buddy if you can, <laughs> or if you have your own house, you know, obviously stay there. It is uh, going to be one of the best music festivals in the world and it's only going to continue to get better as they attract bigger and bigger stars. So I would highly, highly recommend that aspect because it is one of the, I think, coolest experiences on the planet. In addition, uh, another big thing that's popular that's growing there is equestrian polo on that side of the valley. So if your family's into that, it's one more unique highlight. But one thing you will not find a lot of in the Palm Springs Valley as a whole is great hotels. There are some good hotels and there are some ones that are being developed currently, but from a hotel perspective, and I know this is a real estate channel, uh, it's not like other cities that have, you know, Four Seasons and Fairmont and some of these, you know, world-class hotels. Unfortunately, it's been quite limited. Now, there is more stuff on the go, particularly in Palm Springs, uh, as they're developing Ritz-Carlton. Um, there's gonna be some, there are gonna be some better hotels, but it's just not a great place for that perspective. 
My assumption and my guess is going to be, if I were to, to think ahead in five to ten years, because of all the regulation that's happening, and like Hinta for that matter as well, it was May 20th, they put a moratorium on short-term vacation rentals as well. So one more city eliminating the ability for people to get these STVR permits. So more inventory coming off the market as we kind of move forward within the valley. So how do you stay there? You either got to own, you got to stay with a buddy, or you're going to have a limited amount of vacation properties or hotels. But because of this limited inventory, my assumption is we're going to see more hotels come online there over the next decade, better hotels that are going to add you know, all the amenities you expect in a four and five star experience. Now that's Palm Springs. I could do a much, uh, I could go a, a lot further on it, but if you have any more questions on this, we put links down in the show notes here to give you ability to reach out to us. We're here to help you find your perfect piece of real estate. So ping us if we can help, because we are definitely, I would say well-versed in the market, can help connect you with the right people to make great decisions. And if you found value in this, I know there's a, a lot of info kind of drinking from the fire hose, so to speak. Uh, but if you found value or you think a friend might find value, please share this with them. And I know everyone says that, but for me, it's so important. I mentioned my why is helping people, giving this free education. You will help me by helping others. Spread the word, send this link off, give it a like, whatever. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in today and we'll catch you in the next show.